Okay. Um, when I say the word inference, what comes to mind? What do you guys think an inference is? Let's just start there. It's a suggestion. <coughs> hmm. Like a piece of advice? No, like, um, um, a rec not necessarily a recommendation, but a way to put you towards this particular idea or okay. thought. It points you, an inference is something that is pointing you to an idea. Yeah. Inference is reading between the lines. It's reading between the lines. So like you have two sentences and you decide to ignore them and focus on what's in between them. Or you're putting them together and saying, well, I know what you wanted to say. You just didn't say it. I know it's not me. It's, it's not you. It's me. But reading between the lines, we know it's really you, not me. <laughs> now I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Right, like I'm just saying, when someone breaks up with someone and they say, it's not you, it's me, it's they're not. saying it's not you, it's me, but when you read between the lines, really, you, you know it's, 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 it is you, it's not me. Yeah. Okay? So that's, that's a little, so the problem with your analogy, right, that's, a, that's a, like a, an idiom, right, is, what do you mean by that? The passages that say it, but you can logically pick it up from the passage. Okay, okay. So, it's something that is deduced from other claims. So some claim was said, and you're inferring another claim from that claim. Yes. Or multiple claims. Okay, that is one definition of an inference. Anything else? Anyone want to add to that? Just like an educated assumption? Maybe? An educated yes. assumption. Like a hypothesis, basically. A hypothesis. Isn't that an opinion? Is it an opinion? Okay, there's a lot of confusion out here. Um, <laughs> these are good. <laughs> like, you're like, wait a second, I know what inference means. Um, well, an inference is anything that must be true given what was said. So, uh, your initial definition was partly correct. It's not 100% correct, and it can be misleading. So, um, let's say that a passage has three claims in it. Right? Claim one, claim two, claim three. Well, an inference is something that you could deduce from one or more of those claims. <laughs> so, if someone says, it's not me, or no, it's not you, it's me, right? <laughs> In life, we would say, oh, well, I get it, so it's me, it's not you. But um, that would not be something that you could deduce on the LSAT, right? On the LSAT, they're saying, okay, we're going to give you claims. You have to accept them as true. And then we want you to decide what must be true on the basis of them. One of those things might be, um, if you... Uh, oh, I don't know why this popped into my head, but in Japan, they eat horse. Okay? I went to Japan once, and they, some guy gave me horse. I said, I want you to eat this. And it was rock, by the way. No. What did no. like? Different, I don't know, actually, it was cold and it was raw. I was more obsessed by it. I was like, this is just cold. Anyways, and then I think I put wasabi sauce on it and it just was like hot then. It was very confusing. I was like, he's like, what do you think? What do you think? I'm like, I don't know. Like, he's like, you just ate horse. I'm like, okay. So anyways, if you eat horse, <laughs> you might get wigged out. It's okay, you know, other, other cultures, you know, they, like, we eat chickens. I'm sure there's somewhere where they're like, I can't believe you eat chickens. Right. I love my chickens. So don't be all judgy. <laughs> all right, so if you eat horse, then you're going to get wigged out. What is something that you could infer from this claim? If you aren't wigged out. Then you have not eaten horse, right? Now this is a inference. It is something that must be true given what was said. It's a contrapositive. It's what we talked about last time, right? Mm -hmm. So if you accept this, if, if you accept this is true, then this is another claim that must be true on the basis of it. Now notice, this is just one claim. So let's say this is claim one in my argument. Let's say that claim two says if you get wigged out, then you're going to cry. All right? So this is claim two. Um, if you accept both of these claims as true, what's another claim that you could accept as true? Yes. If you eat horse, you will be wigged out and you will 
cries, so if you eat horse, you will cry. Yeah, if you'll eat horse, then you will cry, right? So this is also considered an inference. Now notice, this inference was just taking one claim and deducing a new idea from it. This inference right here was taking two claims and deducing a new idea from it. Now, there's... It's Logan, right? Yes. You, you all right? Yeah, I was... Are you I still was, thinking about horses? <laughs> yeah, I wigged out, but I got it. I wrapped okay. my head around it. Okay. Okay. So, notice, here I take one claim and deduce something new from it. Here I take two claims and deduce something new from it. Can anyone give me another deduction you could make? If you don't cry, then you didn't eat the horse. Yeah, if you don't cry, then you must not have eaten horse. Because if you had eaten the horse, you would have got wigged out. If you got wigged out, then you cry, right? So if you come up to someone like, yeah, I've never cried in my life. You're like, oh, you've never had a horse before. <laughs> that would be a logical deduction on the basis of these two claims. Okay, so both of these are inferences. Now there's one more inference, and this is what tends to wig people out, talking about wigging out, is <clears throat> an inference is anything, we just talked about how any is everything, right? Anything that must be true. So another inference could be if you eat horse, then you will get wigged out. Now that's a little bit different than what your definition was. It was like, oh, it's something between the lines. Yes, it can be, it often is, but it also could just be the lines themselves. Right? Like, okay, if this is true, then this is another claim that must be true on the basis of them. Of it. Okay. Yes? <laughs> Sorry, just one question. Would, is there a fifth thing of if you don't cry, you haven't been with out, you haven't eaten horse? If you don't cry, then you have not been wigged out, and if you haven't been wigged out, we know that you have an eaten horse. So the, like, it works on the, on like the third square? Yeah. You can also reverse that. You can reverse that, yeah. Okay. That's just a contrapositive. Yeah, we can go back and forth with contrapositives all day long. But I mean, even with the, like, extended. Like even that. with the chain, okay. yeah, yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you follow the chain, the chain was like, if you eat hoist, then you're going to get wigged out. If you get wigged out, then you're going to cry. So if we know you didn't cry, then there's no way you could have ever been wigged out because wigging out guarantees you're going to cry. And if you haven't ever been wigged out before, then there's no way you could have eaten horse before because eating horse would make you wig out. So you can just follow it. You can okay. just go backwards. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, yes? Okay, I'm just confused on the difference between the, the first, yeah, that and that box right here. There's no difference. Okay, so why? But this is, what I'm trying to illustrate, and it's weird, but I just want to illustrate it, is that that would be considered an inference. Okay. Because if I told you that I like sushi, I'm talking about Japan right now, I like sushi, and then it said, which one of the following could be properly inferred from that information above? And answer choice A says, he likes sushi, I guarantee you 25 to 40% of the test takers would be like, well, that's not right, because you can't infer that. But, you can. but that is correct, because a, a, an inference is just anything that must be true given what was said. And this happens a lot in reading comp, too. There are a lot of inference questions in reading comp, and people will go over the correct answer because they're like, oh, well, the passage said this, so it's not this. What is something new that I could infer from the passage? And we're like, ah. Well, wait, wait, hold on. I know it seemed like a really easy answer, but that's actually correct. If something is ever wrong, it's not wrong because it was said. It's wrong because you're actually misreading the passage or the answer. Okay, so an inference is anything that must be true given what was said. Now, um, when you're trying to find inferences, when you're trying to find things that you can infer from other things, do you think that you want to find things that are strongly stated or weakly stated? Weakly. Yes, why? Because we can negate it. <laughs> we can negate it and make it strong. I wouldn't worry so much about negation right now. I would just think about directly. Like, if I said to you, um, if I said to you that uh, all of you like Tetris. You guys heard of that game? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All of you like Tetris. 
It's like yeah, Generation Mike Daniel. All right, is that still around? Well, didn't Biden say like phonograph yesterday or the other day or like record player or something? Did you guys hear this? Yeah, it's it's I just I don't know what that's tough. That's rough. Um. Okay. Anyways, so uh, all of you like Tetris. Can we conclude from that that all of you like Tetris? Yes. Yes. That's a proper inference, right? Could we conclude from that that most of you like Tetris? Yeah. Yes. Yes, because most is just more than half. Mm -hmm. and since all of you do, it's true that most of you do. How about some of you like Tetris? Yes. yes. Now, what if I said that most of you like Tetris? That's a fact. Can we conclude that all of you like Tetris? Yeah. No. no. So you can't go up, but you can always go down. Oh. Right? Like, if you're given evidence, your conclusion or what you infer from that evidence can always be weaker than the evidence itself. So, um, the, the point here is that when you're looking for something that must be true given what was said, when you're going through the answers and looking for an inference, you want to watch out for strongly worded answers because they may go too far. You may be like, yeah, they talked about that, but they didn't say you that this is always the case. Or they didn't even say this was usually the case. They just suggested this was sometimes the case. So the answer is wrong maybe because it went too far, right? Okay, um, that's inferences. <laughs> inferences are simply things that must be true given other things that were said. Right? And they could either be a restatement of one of the claims, or they could be a combination of two or more of the statements. All right. Now, um, let's talk about strengthening questions. Let's say you have an argument, and um, then the question is, which one of the following, if true, which one of the following, if true, most strengthens the argument above? Well, in that case... What you're being asked to do is assume that the five answer choices are true and then find one that does the most to help the conclusion. So that means you have to have an argument in the passage. There has to be an argument. And you're trying to help it, which means it cannot be a valid argument. Do you guys remember what makes an argument valid or invalid? What? You're like, yeah, we remember. <laughs> We're not going to tell you. We remember. <laughs> Move on, please. Or seeing if you remember it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about Tetris. You're like, we don't know how old you are. If LSAT says it's valid, it's valid? No. We can decide yeah. whether it's valid. Now, LSAC is going to have an opinion, but they don't tell us. Okay. Um, Wait, what? There's no gap between the premise and the conclusion. Okay, there's no gap between the premises and the conclusion. What do you mean there's no gap? That's like a metaphor. There's not. Like, you don't need to bring in an assumption to connect the two. Logical conclusion. Okay, so what you're saying is correct. You don't need to bring in additional evidence. In other words, the evidence that you have is enough to prove the conclusion. So remember how we were just talking about inferences? There are things that must be true given what was said. A valid argument is one in which the conclusion is a proper inference, it is something that you could safely conclude on the basis of the evidence that they gave you. Right? So, if my original argument were, hey, if you eat horse, then you're going to get wigged out. And then it was like, conclusion, therefore, if you, have, if you have never been wigged out, you've never eaten horse, that would be a valid conclusion because it's proven by the evidence. If the conclusion is not valid, if it says like, oh, if you eat horse, then you're going to get wigged out. Therefore, if you eat horse, then you're going to cry. Does this conclusion follow logically from this one? Mm -hmm. No, you need more evidence. What else do you need to know? If you get wigged out, then you cry. Yeah, you need to know that becoming wigged out is going to lead to your crying. Right Now, if that were added, if we did add that, then, and this is an assumption, if that were added, though, the argument or the conclusion would follow logically. It could be something that you could infer from the premises. <coughs> so the bottom line is that if, if the conclusion in an argument is an inference, in other words, if it's something that must be true given what was said in the premises, then the argument is valid. But the vast majority of arguments on the LSAT are invalid 
because the premises are not sufficient. They don't provide enough evidence. They provide some evidence. Right? Now, in a strengthening question, what they're asking you to do is strengthen the argument or the reasoning or the conclusion. At the end of the day, you don't care about which one they're asking you to do because they're just asking you to strengthen the conclusion. And the way you do that is you add in more evidence that makes the conclusion more likely to be true. You can't add evidence to an argument that's already proven. You can't add evidence to an argument that's valid. Right? Like, let's just say that this was our original argument. That our original argument was like, look, if you get wigged out, you're going to cry. And if you eat horse, then you're going to get wigged out. Therefore, if you eat horse, then you're going to cry. This conclusion follows logically from this, these premises. So if the LSAT then said, hey, which one of the following is true would do the most to strengthen the argument? There would be no correct answer because you, you can't help something that's already reached its like goal, right? It's already, it's, it's already proven. It's like... Well, guess what? If you eat horse, you're going to get really wigged out. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, ooh, you know? It's like, nothing's happened. We're still, like, just, this is just as proven as it was before, right? So, my point in saying all this is that when you read an argument, and then you're like, okay, here's the conclusion, and okay, it seems like an okay argument, but not great. Um, in a strengthening question, if you feel like the argument is valid, you're missing something, because there must be some missing premise. There must be something that's out of line, right? And so, um, otherwise, there'd be nothing to add to it. In a strengthening question, they're saying which one of the following, if true, does the most to strengthen the conclusion in the argument, right? And the conclusion could be anywhere at the beginning, middle, or end, or whatever. Um, that means you're likely to want what type of answer choice? Strongly worded answer? Or weakly worded answer? Weakly worded answer. Weakly worded answer. No, strongly worded You're like, I have no idea. <laughs> I can see there's confusion here. So let's think about this for a second. These are five pieces of evidence, and you're being asked to choose the piece of evidence that's going to do the most to help your conclusion. So the stronger the evidence, the more it can help you, right? So in an inference question, you're trying to figure out what must be true given what was said, and you want to go weaker. In a strengthening question, you're saying which one of the following, if it were true, would do the most to help the conclusion? You want a stronger answer. Mm -hmm. So inference questions are considered top-down questions, whereas strengthening questions are considered bottom-up questions. Because in an inference question, you're trying to figure out what must be true given what was said, whereas in a strengthening question, you're assuming that the five answer choices are true, and trying to find the one that's going to do the most to help the conclusion above. In an inference question, the passage supports one of the answers. In a strengthening question, one of the answers supports the passage. Well, okay. Say that again. In an inference question, the passage and its claims support one of the answers. And that's a top-down? That's a top-down question because the passage is supporting the answers. Up, down, top. It's top down because the passage is supporting one of the answers. Mm -hmm. Whereas strengthening questions are bottom up because you're asked to assume that the five answer choices are true and you're trying to pick the one that's going to do the most to support the passage, specifically the conclusion in the passage. Okay? Now, the way they word these questions, people tend to get inference questions and strengthening questions mixed up, but they're totally different question types. Right? In one case, you're trying to help an argument, and in the other case, you're trying to figure out what must be true, given what was said. Interestingly, when we were having that debate about the reading comp question, that was kind of the same thing. It was like, oh, wait, do we accept these answer choices as true, and then try to figure out which one does the most to support, or do we try to figure out which one is supported by the passage? And we were like, oh, well, this is wrong because it's not supported by the passage, but that really wasn't the question. Same kind of deal. Okay, so... Um, we're going to do some questions together now, and what I want you to do is figure out whether you think it's an inference question or a strengthening question, and then give it your best shot, and we can start talking about how these awareness of these different questions types affects your answer choices. When it comes to strategies, your strategy is always the same. 
read and try to understand the passage. If it's an argument, try to figure out why the conclusion isn't proven. If it's not an argument, then it's just a set of facts, and you just try to figure out what must be true on the basis of those facts. That's it. It's the same strategy over and over and over again. It's just that once you get into the question, then you may be looking for something different, but your approach to the passage is the same. Just try to understand it. If it's an argument, why doesn't it prove the conclusion? Or does it? 5% of the time, it does. 5% of the time, you're like, wait a sec. If I accept these premises as true, then this conclusion has to be true. Great. Then they're going to ask you like for a parallel reasoning question or something. They can't ask you to strengthen that. Okay? All right. So here are some examples. Um, 